everyone. My name is Paul Third, and this week I want to discuss some home studio recording myths, focusing on voiceover and podcasting. Number one, to get a broadcast sound, you should use a dynamic microphone like what I'm speaking through right now. That is absolute bollocks. It's just became like an industry standard thing because it does have a certain sound, but it doesn't mean to say that it's a broadcast sound, and it doesn't mean to say that dynamic microphones will sound the best for every single voice on a podcast. The best microphone for you when you're doing voiceovers and podcasting is the microphone that sims best for your specific voice. And to be honest, like the only kind of thing that I could think of when it comes to dynamic microphones and a broadcast sim would be proximity effect. Proximity effect is this. When you speak closer to the microphone, you get like proximity effect. Your, your voice sims a little bit more bassier and a little bit more rich and warm. However, that's the kind of the only thing that I could think of for a dynamic microphone giving you more of a broadcast sound because obviously it's a little bit harder with condenser microphones because they are more sensitive compared to dynamic microphones. And the reason that like there are different microphones suited for different voices is because they all have their own voicings and every voice sounds different. So for example, my voice is very dark and boomy doesn't have a lot of high end information in it but it's very 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 boomy where if you take somebody that's kind of kind of mid forward and there's not kind of lots of low end in their voice it's kind of like a natural high pass filter normally they like microphones that kind of you know like bring in the low end of their voice where with me (laughs) you can hear it already i have a very low boomy voice so normally dynamics don't really suit my voice that much And normally I find that um, condensers normally suit my voice a little bit more because there's more top-end information in condenser microphones. And if I had my choice, I would use the Lute LCT 440 Pure, which is behind me. But there is a reason why I don't use it, and that'll kind of go into the next segment. However, just to prove that like condensers can still do just as good a job as dynamics in terms of voiceover, here is an example where I've got this microphone here in the setting that I use it in. I'm going to have the LCT 440 Pure and also my old Audio Technica AT2050 condenser. My name is Paul Thurt and you are listening to the SE Dynacaster Dynamic Microphone. My name is Paul Thurt and you are listening to the LCT 440 Pure condenser microphone. My name is Paul Thurt. And you are listening to the Audio Technica AT2050 condenser microphone. So there you go, right? You don't need to use a dynamic. However, why am I still using a dynamic in all of my voiceovers? And this brings me to the next myth, which I found is actually true, which is that dynamic microphones pick up less reflections in an acoustically compromised room. And I'm not going to lie, right? I genuinely did think it was a myth and it was all BS. But after I did some tests, it is actually true, in my room anyway, that the sensitivity of the condensers, um, like the Lewitt LCT 440 Pure especially, it does pick up. Well, it's not picking up, right? The reflections are louder, right? Both microphones pick up the same reflections, right? The, the, the reflections still bounce around the room. It's just that with the dynamic being less sensitive compared to the condenser the reflections are quieter so it's the same reflections they don't pick up less reflections it's the same reflections it's just that the reflections are quieter and unfortunately the reflections bother me because they're very hard to take out and from a qualitative element as much as I prefer the sound of my voice to the Lewitt I would much rather not have to deal with the reflections and this thing still sounds great so yes I can say that It's not a myth, well, dependent on how you say it and how you see it, um, but dynamic microphones in an acoustically compromised room will have less audible reflections compared to a condenser, and the worse your room is, the louder that's going to be. If you set your room up right and it's acoustically treated correctly, then you can use whatever microphone you like. So please don't see this thing as like a fix, right? The fix is acoustically treating your room. And this brings me to another myth. Now, this one, in my opinion, is actually a myth. Is that foam acoustic kind of filters like this, right? This thing here, that they fix room acoustics and like they pick up less reflections in a room. Like I actually thought this thing worked and it 
it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't, right? What it actually does, I right, see this thing here, like the, these chaotic eyeballs, but this is, I can't remember what this is, I got it off Amazon. I personally think because of the amount of low end and mud that's brought into it, that uh, to them it sims drier, but when you EQ like all of that mud out and then you do a level match DB, it doesn't do a very good job. It's, it sims really the exact same, as I'll show you in these audio examples right now. My name is Paul Third, and you are listening to the LCT 440 Pure Condenser Microphone. My name is Paul Third, and you are listening to the LCT 440 Pure Condenser Microphone. A Scots porridge oats, big finishing boats, a taste of scotch and malt, Fish supper wrapped in newspaper with vinegar and salt. Scots porridge oats, big fishing boats. A taste of scotch or malt. Fish supper wrapped in newspaper with vinegar and salt. Right, okay, so next one. Right, now this is... It's kind of more of a YouTube myth, kind of. I have seen it on certain forums and stuff like that, but I have seen this a lot on YouTube that... Many people talk about fet heads and like cloud lifters, which are basically gain boosters for like gain hungry microphones like this and the Shure SM7B and stuff like that. Now, many people say that the um, the fet heads and the cloud lifters there isn't really like an audible tone shift. Now, obviously, I don't have um, a SM7B, so I've not got a cloud lifter or fet head, but this microphone does come built in with its own dynamite preamp. Now, you can buy it separately as well uh, from SE Electronics. Now. This is a great feature of this mic, however, I don't use it. I don't use it. I genuinely, like, just max the gain on my preamps. And that's kind of another myth as well that Julian Krause kind of debunked, was that you should be using less gain and then boosting in post. Now, the reason that you shouldn't do that and the reason why I kind of max out my input gain on my preamps is because you get better signal-to-noise ratio. So if you have a better signal-to-noise ratio, then you'll have less noise in your signal when you go boosting it up in post. So for me, like when I first started using this microphone, I was using the Dynamite because I was like, yes, I, I do think it sounds better. There's a little bit of a tonal shift. However, due to my voice, I actually prefer this microphone without the Dynamite uh, preamp engaged. And I'll show you why in these examples. My name is Paul Thurt. And you are listening to the SE Dynacaster Dynamic Microphone. My name is Paul Third, and you are listening to the SE Dynacaster Dynamic Microphone. I hear a lack of high end in my voice and that kind of low bump as well using the Dynamite. It's, it just doesn't sound great for my voice. I think for some voices that are maybe a slightly a bit thin, it's going to add a little bit of girth and a little bit of weight to your voice. But uh, yeah, it isn't transparent. Like, I don't know about the fit heads and the cloud lifters, but in terms of the dynamite, it is not, right? So if you are buying this microphone, just be aware that the dynamite preamp switch, right? As much as it's giving you kind of more gain if your preamp or your interface doesn't have the gain to kind of handle this, there is a tonal shift. And I'm just going to make you aware that it is a myth that they are transparent. And we're finally at the end of the video and I have one more myth for you. And this myth, is that you cannot track with plugins because of latency. Maybe like <laughs> 10 years ago, yes, maybe maybe that was true. But in this day and age, right, you've got, you think about universal audio, right? You've got all of like the Unison stuff, right? You've got the real-time DSP, Antelope Audio, you've got the real-time DSP with their plugins, and even what you're listening to right now, right behind me, well, let's see if I've got my finger right, <laughs> is the Revelator, the IO24 from PreSonus. I asked PreSonus specifically if I could try it out. And I'm so glad I did because honestly, it has made my recording process so much easier. So in terms of what you're listening to right now, I've got a high pass filter, I've got a gate, I've got a, like an 1176 style compressor, really fast attack and release. And uh, I've got an EQ as well, just like kind of some cleanup EQ going after this thing is great and it's cheap and the preamps are great in it conversion is good as well and yes you can record in 2022 obviously with plugins if this has been interesting for you or it's helped you right then please pop a like on the video if there are any myths or any things that you think i've missed that you think would be handy pop a comment down below so we can all get 
into all this geeky stuff. There's a lot of stuff on the internet. Not all of it's true. Some of it is. But at the end of the day, I do advise always test all of this stuff out for yourself. Please, okay? Just do it yourself. And don't rely on me all the fucking time. My name is Paul Third, and I'll see you again next week.